Welcome to our program, Demonstrations of Faith. I have some very special guests with us today. We're going to be talking about uh, an upcoming event that I know that you are going to be interested in being involved in, and it's called the National Day of Prayer. And I have Commissioner, or former County Commissioner Bob Larkin, who's with us today, uh, Pastor Rick Fair from Living Waters Church in Sparks, and Pastor Dan Sipma of University Family Fellowship. Yeah. And so... Good to have you guys on the program today. Um, we've been a part of this uh, event for a number of years. I've attended a, several of them and um, have the privilege of being part of actually organizing uh, this particular year. But uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Bob here has been involved for quite a long time, so I wanted you to share a little bit about it. And we'll just kind of have a conversation about this event because I think it's so important that we get folks to come out and uh, to pray together, especially yeah. where, with where our country is right now, you know. Amen. So, yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Thank you, Pastor uh, yep. David and, and Pastor Sidma and Pastor Fair for uh, also co-hosting this year. This is a rather unique event uh, yep. uh, for this particular year. Usually it's one congregation that is right. the hosting. And uh, this time we have three, so this is fantastic. This is uh, a great, great moment. And a lot of times you don't want to have more than one because anything with two heads is a freak. But we've got three <laughs> heads, you know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah. But it's amazing when the, when the Spirit of God is in yeah. it, then yeah. uh, it's not a problem. It is. And not only do you have three <laughs> pastors, you have, you have two uh, politicians, uh, of course, Commissioner Weber. That's right, that's right. Actually, uh, kudos yeah. go to uh, Commissioner Weber. She actually... Uh, brought the National Day of Prayer locally to local governments uh, with uh, Washoe County uh, government right. in, uh, I think, 2002. And then I joined the commission in 2004 and immediately said, you bet, Monty, I want to be a part of this. And we have uh, been sponsoring, Mr. Weber and I have been sponsoring with no taxpayer money whatsoever involved, the National Day of Prayer down at the county complex, right. which is at uh, 9th and Wells uh, on uh, the first Thursday of May. For uh, since 2004, this will be what then our 10th um, year. Right. Uh, Bonnie's uh, <clears throat> almost 15th year, or uh, a 12th year, in bringing the National Day of Prayer locally, uh, in honoring uh, our Lord, right, our Savior, in the Judeo-Christian fashion with which the National Day of Prayer is brought to us by the National Day of Prayer organization. Right. Uh, that of course uh, Shirley Dobson is the uh, president of. And uh, so, it, and it is a Judeo-Christian event. And so when was it, when was the first National Day of Prayer? I don't recall, but uh, it's been going on for quite a long time now. It, it has. So I'll give a little bit of brief history on that. Yes, please do. Sure. Please yeah. do. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, the National Day of Prayer goes all the way back to our founding fathers, 1775, mm -hmm. when the Continental Congress actually would bring in each session of, of the Continental Congress with prayer. And then in uh, 1863, President Lincoln uh, decided that this should be, a day should be set aside. Mm -hmm. But it really wasn't until 1952 when Congress and President Truman at the time mm -hmm. actually set aside the, the, a, a day of prayer. And then it was Ronald Reagan that actually set the first Thursday mm -hmm. of May as a National Day of Prayer. That's yeah. kind of a little history of how the National Day of Prayer that started. And anything that you want to add to that? Well, I just, I wanted to share with the idea. It's amazing with what uh, President Truman uh, did, because President Truman is also the first president to recognize Israel uh, as a nation. Uh, so the Judeo-Christian concept of working through him and the position that God placed him in in the country to, uh, to recognize Israel, uh, as well as to introduce, um, you know, the work of setting the National Day of Prayer a little more structured into our cultures is an amazing thing. That's awesome. So uh, since uh, 1952, mm -hmm. there's been um, a National Day of Prayer officially recognized. Okay. And then uh, with President Reagan bringing it into the first day of, uh, first, two, first Thursday in, in May, there's, that's been the formalization of it. Locally, 
Uh, we've been hosting, Commissioner Weber and I have been hosting down at the county complex mm -hmm. uh, the first day of, uh, of May mm -hmm. as the national, local National Day of Prayer. And we've held it specifically at the Washington County complex to show our subservience of our government to our Lord. The scripture tells us that all government is of God. And so we want to show that, even though sometimes government may not perform in that exactly. manner. Exactly, right. Commissioner Weber and I have always felt that that should be number one priority for commissioners and for local government to show and honor our Lord. Right. So there's many different subjects that are, are covered, and I thought maybe we can talk about some of the, the things that we're going to be praying for when we come down there. Another thing, too, I think is important is, particularly for our viewing audience, is that um, sometimes people don't think that their being present, just one person is going to make a difference. But what if everybody thought that way? Then we would never have anybody show up for anything. Amen. But uh, there's just, it's amazing what God can do with just one person. And then, of course, the scripture tells us that one will put a thousand to flight and two will put 10,000 to flight. There's are some, those are so much power uh, in unity. And so we want to encourage you to uh, put it on your calendars yeah. and come down the first Thursday of May and be a part of the National Day of Prayer because we really, really need to come together. I, I like to call it, we have a national emergency. Amen. It's Amen. a national day of prayer because we have a national emergency. And uh, really, God wants to do great things through this nation. And I think that there's, or it is possible that our best years are ahead of us if we, if we get lined up with God. Yeah. And I know that you're waiting, <laughs> right, brother. Go ahead, fire yeah, away. I was just going to tell everybody <laughs> what time it was at. It's from noon to 1 o'clock. And so it, it goes specifically one hour. And so if you have to take lunch off, maybe you could get an extra 10 minutes travel time or something. But from noon to one, we'll be praying down there and it'll be, it'll be exactly an hour. We will cover a lot of topics and there will be uh, multiple pastors praying and we hope to have some dignitaries there to, to, to show them we're praying for their positions and what they're doing in our county here. And uh, so just plan that day, May 1st from noon to one to be down there on the county complex on uh, 9th street and we're just doing what our founding fathers established mm -hmm. from the very beginning we're continuing that and particularly now too there's so many uh forces out there that want to take our rights Amen. away from us our rights to to assemble publicly and to worship publicly and um, you know we know that that really is is demonic in nature and uh, but the Bible says that God has given us all power and all authority. The, you know the scripture Jesus said this. He said all power has been given unto me in heaven and earth. This was after the resurrection. He was giving. He was commissioning the disciples to go preach the gospel throughout the world. And he said all power and all authority has been given unto me. Go therefore in this power and in this authority. And and really Christians need to realize how much power and authority that they have. Uh, in the spiritual realm, and I think that as we pray and come together and, and, and call upon the Lord and make declarations of faith, because we have that power to do that, it'll make a difference, not only you know, nationally, of course, but locally, and, and really need yes. uh, some things to be manifesting. And God wants to do something, but He needs us to ask. The Bible says, right. if you, you have not because you ask not. And uh, John Wesley, I believe it was, that made the statement, it says that he says that, that it seems that God can do nothing in the earth unless someone asks him. And so one person can make all the difference. Abraham is a good example. Think of some other Bible characters. They were just one person, and, and God answered uh, the prayers of that one person, changed the city, and changed a nation because of the power of one person believing God. And what do you think about having, you know, a thousand people down there at the Washoe County Complex? That is doable, and we should have good representation yeah. there. But go ahead, brother. No, I just, I, I want to emphasize the idea of showing up and participating for, yeah. for the community yeah. to yeah. come do this, and especially believers and those that are in a Ju Judeo-Christian faith in particular. Uh, because what we need to understand, again, locally, we have so many statistics that Nevada and uh, in particular, is on the highest ranking of the lowest sort of social climates. Uh, teen pregnancy, um, you know, drug addiction, uh, graduations in, in the education and getting kids through school. So many of these things, I believe, are indicative of the fact that we also have the lowest uh, church attendance 
uh, yeah. in, in many yeah. places in the yeah. country. So there's a lack of a spiritual. The, the reality is, as we come together to pray, that we will begin to see things happen in the spirit. It doesn't exclude us from being able to take action, uh, whether it's political action or social action. Right, right. But the, it begins in the prayer, begins in the spirit, because we recognize, as uh, uh, Bob Larkin, Dr. Larkin here, and Commissioner Bonnie uh, Weber are doing is to honor the Lord Jesus Christ in the yeah. public. He says, the Lord says that if, if you are not ashamed of me uh, before men, I shall not be ashamed of you before yeah. my Father in heaven. And he intercedes for us on that behalf and that we can see a direct result maybe of a transformation of our community if indeed we are not ashamed to profess our faith in our Lord and Savior yeah. publicly. So yeah. th it's important that you do matter. Every single person matters uh, to come and participate uh, whatever church it is that you go to, come and help us pray and intercede for our area and then, then let God uh, ignite and move you into the places uh, that he wants us to to take action. Excellent. You know, I want to just say um, uh, thank you to, to Dr. Larkin here for your boldness uh, to stand up and, and uh, you're not ashamed of the gospel. You're not ashamed of your faith or anything like that. You're not quiet. You're not a closet Christian. So I want to say thank you for staying out of the closet, Bob, as far as your Christianity is <laughs> concerned. You, thank you. Well, you <laughs> because know, it makes a difference. Some, there's, uh, there's not too many areas of our life that are so deeply impacted than with actions of local government. That's good. Mm -hmm. We you'd be surprised at the ordinances and the rules and the regulations that are passed. Mm -hmm. Sometimes with not the attendance of one individual from the community, we need to pray for every single city council person, every mm -hmm. single county commissioner, every assemblyman, every state senator, all of our cabinet level mm -hmm. state offices, and more particularly with our Congress and with the administration. Whether you agree with the policies, mm -hmm. we need to be praying for them because they can impact what we do tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you right now, many, many times they are searching for the answer themselves too. They may not admit it, but they're praying too. Right. And with where, where, where many are gathered, mm -hmm. it's going to get heard. Yep. And, our, and our Lord is going to honor those. So that's, that's the attempt here right. with having this down to local uh, county complex. That is to... Um, pray for our local officials. Well, we've got, we're going to, on the agenda, we have many, many different prayers that are going to be offered. A great cast of, of prayers that you guys have put together. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would make a mention that um, it is interfaith. It is not strictly uh, limited to uh, uh, Christians. It's Judeo-Christian in nature. Right. We're going to have um, a rabbi there that will uh, hopefully sing. Yeah, and to offer prayers as well. So that's the idea. That's the concept. And we really, really encourage everyone in the community, just 1 o'clock or from noon to 1 o'clock, just come on down, ask your boss. If you can get off maybe 10 minutes early, come right on down, get off the freeway at Wells, turn right, come down the 9th Street, and we honor that. We are done at 1 o'clock. Exactly. And uh, again, that's the first uh, Thursday of May, May 1st, right? May 1st. Sure May 1st, that's correct. May 1st, yeah, that's it. And so you don't want to miss it. And you being there, even as just one, uh, will make all the difference in the world. And, and a lot of times folks say, well, it really won't make that much of a difference. I've, oh, yes, it will yeah, make a difference. And, you know, difference. some of you are out there and you're thinking, Lord, what can I do? What can I do for you? Well, guess what? He's answering that prayer right now. And uh, one thing you can do for him is to, is to show up at, that, uh, at the complex there and be a part of the National Day of Prayer. Right. Yeah, take a look at your uh, dollar bill or a penny or whatever it is, and it says, One Nation Under God. And if you listen to what's been going on, on in our administration and, and around this, our country right now, it seems to me that we're, we're forgetting that we're one nation under God. And this just brings it back to reality. Uh, we, as, as Dr. Bob said, Dr. Bob Larkin <laughs> said, we, we are uh, s resubmitting the government to, to our Lord and Savior. And so it is a big thing. Yeah. It is a big thing. In fact, if, just make sure you get down there from noon to one. Right. And what is it? First, uh, first Timothy chapter two, it says uh, for us to, how is it when you come together, that uh, we're to pray for those who are in authority right. 
and pray for kings and for, in this case, we would say presidents and governors and and county commissioners and anybody who's in authority, the Bible commands, this is a New Testament, New Covenant commandment through the Apostle Paul that we are to come together and we are to pray for those who are in authority and specifically, it's referring to civil authorities. Right. And he says, and, 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 and God uh, has placed those people in, in their positions so that we could live peaceably upon the earth. That's the purpose of governments. And, you know, like you said, God has called for what purpose? So that we could live peaceably upon the earth. And so that's what God intends government to be about. And uh, oftentimes, governments go the opposite of that direction. And perhaps because there's nobody praying and standing in the gap and uh, making that difference that they can make. And so, uh, you know, we're responsible. And we've talked about this before that, that this is our assignment here. As pastors, as, as, as leaders w- within the community, God has assigned us to this community, this northern Nevada. And if he's assigned us to it, he has not under-equipped us. In fact, God is the one, he, do, he goes over. He never, there's no lack and so we, we have to fulfill our assignment and take our place, our position, spiritually and naturally. And uh, not only we as leaders do that, but anybody, any person out there, um, Christian, Jewish person, or anybody that wants to come down and pray with us, um, we just invite you to do that and take your place, take your position in Christ and uh, uh, believe with us for God's best. So again, yeah. the date, May 1st, uh, Thursday, uh, from uh, 12 to 1 o'clock yeah. at, the, uh, at the county complex right there on 9th and Wells. Correct. Yeah, it'll be a good time. It's always been a good time yeah. when we go down there. Yes. Go ahead, brother. So maybe as a way to help get us into maybe talk about some of the subjects that we're going to be yeah, praying yeah, for. Yeah, sure. But I'm just reminded um, of sort of this concept that the church is part of the community. Amen. So many people don't attend a, a place of worship on a regular basis, maybe uh, sort of put their spiritual development aside. This is an opportunity for those that are faithful, at the very least, to stand up and exercise it so that the church, mm-hmm. you know, we can't complain as the church that we're being overlooked if we don't participate. That's right. So let's participate. We have an opportunity here that's set right. aside on a national level that we can apply locally and do what we believe is be the most important thing to do. And then the church truly can be the heart of the community. The, the church isn't all the community. The church is, in many respects, the heart of the community. We pump the blood of love and Christ through the rest of the body, which includes the, the, the civil areas of the, the politicians, mm-hmm. the education systems, the military, um, Business. businesses, and media. media, and a, lo- a lot of these other areas with family and the church being um, on the list. Let's mm-hmm. talk about maybe uh, some of those places and areas that we're going to pray for. Yeah, uh, Dr. Larkin. Well, absolutely. You led right into that. You know, we're, we've got, I uh, believe there's uh, seven actual uh, areas that the National Day of Prayer Organization suggests. These are suggestions, but I think they're good suggestions uh, with uh, starting, uh, first of all, with, uh, with education, probably the most meaningful, mm-hmm. impactful area. Uh, when you think about the children going every single day and they're hearing uh, stuff maybe that we don't want them to hear right. or stuff that... Uh, is uh, not correct, Mm -hmm. then that prayer comes out in that capacity. It's also going to be a business prayer. We need to pray for businessmen. Right. As uh, they impact us uh, as well. You may say, well, how does a businessman impact me? Well, they set prices. Those prices uh, very much so uh, impact the family budget. We're going to be praying for our military. You know, we put them in harm's way all the time. And this Mm -hmm. way we get to honor them by saying thank you very much, but also putting a hedge hedge over them. The clergy. Yeah. You guys. You guys are directly in the fire. <laughs> Got a big bullseye on us. <laughs> <laughs> big, big bullseye. And we need to be praying for you guys, Amen. too, as you carry forth God's word. Um, and we're going to be uh, also uh, praying for um, governments uh, in uh-huh. general. Right. Uh-huh. But, you know, it's more than just the electeds. Right. It's the firemen. It's the policemen. Yeah. They're, they're in the firing line as Exactly, well. exactly, yeah. Yes. So there's many, many areas that we're going to be covering. In media also, I think. Media, that's correct. For, yeah. you know, definitely need to cover that. We have to cover the media. Yeah. Why? Because they're the word. They carry forth the word into our community. And many times the stories are 
well, quite frankly, they're incorrect. Right. And we need That's to be right. praying that they have a deaf ear. You know, I've, I've known many, many media personages over the years, and all of them, I believe, are seeking the truth. Mm-hmm. Sometimes mm-hmm. they're just confused about what the truth is, and so we need to be praying for them as well. Exa- absolutely. Yeah. I don't know if that's all seven, but it um, seems like there's one or two that uh, I missed in my memory. The family was in there, the family was in there somewhere. A uh, family? That's yeah. correct. The family is going to be a part of that yeah. as well. Be praying for our family core and our family values. And exactly. Yeah. What the family can do. Uh, so those are most of the areas. Um, I'm not sure. Very, very important areas that uh, certainly need to be covered in prayer. And, and uh, so um, there's no doubt every time that we've come down there that there's just a sense of God's presence there, you know. And there's unity and harmony. And uh, something that you, you t- touched on, Pastor Rick, concerning the reputation that Reno has, not just Reno, but Washoe County, that there was a yes. survey that was done. I don't know, it was a study. And uh, they discovered that, that, um, that Washoe County was the most unspiritual, unchurched county in the United States of America. So uh, we want to change that reputation. You know, the amazing thing about that is, uh, you know, God likes to move in places like yes. that. Amen. That is right. Because everybody says it's a lost cause, it's sin city, it's... You know, they're going to hell in a handbasket. Well, I don't know about a handbasket, but nevertheless, you know, um, we can change that. And that is changing. The spiritual atmosphere of this yeah. region is really changing. And we certainly want to, uh, Reno, Nevada, Sparks to be known not as a place where people gamble, but at a, at a, as a place where there was a great move of God that took place among the people. And there is a lot of unity and harmony. It's unheard of really um, across America from what we're hearing uh, as far as unity and harmony among churches and pastors and leaders. This is a, 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 a great thing that's been happening. We've talked a little bit about that. So uh, we need you there. We need, God needs you at the National Day of Prayer. If you've yeah. never been to one, then put it on your account and make, just make plans of saying, you know, Lord, I'm, I, I want to do something for you. And this is, this is one way where you can start and uh, to be there on May the 1st from 12 to 1 o'clock at the Washoe County Complex on 9th Street, right there at 9th and Wells. Well, I think that, is there anything else that you think that uh, we need to cover before we wrap this up? Well, I'll just throw out another question. Just a couple ideas on. on the subjects themselves. You know, for me, my regular daily reading, I'm reading through, you read through the Bible, and hopefully many people get disciplined in it. But I'm reading through the prophet Jeremiah, and Jeremiah is prophesying when Israel is being taken into captivity. And he says, when you go into captivity and you enter a culture that is ungodly, pray for the prosperity of the city that you're in. Even though they're going into a captive nation, the Lord still tells Jeremiah to tell the people to pray for the prosperity of the city, because when they prosper, when the city prospers, you're going to prosper. You're going to be able to have a greater voice in the city. So it's very important that, you know, again, the economy and locally here, the business economy, we, we want to pray for business to come to Reno, for right. people here to get jobs, for the blessings to come here so that we can see that God is a God who desires to bless and not curse and, and bring uh, the joy of, of the spiritual life as well manifesting in the practical around us. That by itself can be a great example to so yeah. many, a witness of God's glory and favor in this area. You know, I've said this um, among believers, Christians, <laughs> that, uh, they, that complain about the condition uh, of our nation. And I ask, well, um, did you vote? <laughs> and, of course, it seems to me a majority of those that I've talked to do not show up at the polls. And I got to the place where I don't want to hear anybody complain about anything Amen. concerning <laughs> politics or the condition of our nations if you're not willing to show up down there and vote or do something about it. And so, really, this nation needs prayer. And uh, one should not be, uh, well, I'm just going to ca- talk straight. One should not be whining about how things are. And yet, I'm talking about, I'm talking to the children of God out there whining and complaining and if you're not praying and and stepping out and do something about it why don't we just quit the whining let's show up 
And uh, like the Bible says, let us come boldly before the throne of grace. And that can be anywhere you go, the presence right. of God is there. And so why don't we just go down the Washoe County complex and show up and come before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and grace to help in the time of need. And I think this nation is in, definitely in a time of need. It is a, it's a, it's a, a, a real trying time that uh, we're going through, and we can avoid a lot of trouble if we'll just call upon the Lord. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Yes. You know, and when, we, when we go back in history, we go back, the founding fathers came, and I don't know if you can imagine, but when the, the colonies were trying to become a country and a state and the, the argument and finally benjamin franklin said who wasn't was he a deist mm -hmm. he finally said hey if we don't pray this ain't ever going to happen you know what right and, and uh, anything that happens starts with prayer right and we know yeah. that as pastors and, and, and so we ha to start any change in this nation we have to start praying yeah and, uh, and it's it's not a little thing it is a big thing it's a huge thing uh, uh psalms uh, 27 8 which is what uh, Commissioner Weber and I have hung the corporate nature of the National Day of Prayer says this very distinctly. Almighty God, pour forth your mercy upon us as we seek your face for our nation. And that's really the, it's heart. Amen. It's really yeah. the heart of the National Day of Prayer is we're seeking the face of God yeah. to pour his mercy so that we make correct decisions and we do the right thing. This is not to supplant uh, anything that individual congregations are doing or what perhaps other organizations are doing. As far as I know, this is the only recognition that on the National Day of Prayer locally that we have for government. We just invite everybody to be down there from noon till one on the first Thursday in May, this year, May 1st, 9th and Wells. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Well, thank you for joining our broadcast today. God bless you. Have a blessed week and we'll see you next week. I trust that you were blessed by the word today. And I'm going to close out our program this morning by giving you an opportunity to make the most important decision you'll ever make in your life. And that is to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. I like to ask the question, are you saved? And if you died tonight, would you make it to heaven? Keep in mind that you can't earn your way to heaven. Salvation and eternal life is a free gift from God. Jesus paid the ultimate price by becoming a, a sacrifice for you. And his, his, his blood was poured out for you so that you could be redeemed from your sin. And so today is the day of salvation, the Bible says. Don't let another day go by without making the decision to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. The Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord in faith shall be saved. It's as simple as that. And so I challenge you today, make that decision. Say yes to Jesus so you can be born again and your name will be written in the Lamb's book of life in heaven. You're making your reservation for heaven today. So pray this prayer out loud. Mean it with all of your heart to the Lord. Say this, dear God in heaven, I come to you in Jesus' name. I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and I believe with my heart that Jesus was raised from the dead. Lord Jesus, come into my heart now and save me and make me a brand new person on the inside. I thank you, Lord, for dying for my sins. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that and you meant it, I believe you got born again. I'd like to know about it. Please call us or send us an email. Again, thank you for joining our broadcast today, and we'll see you next week. God bless you. And beside the river. Thank you for watching Demonstrations of Faith, a ministry outreach of Faith Alive Christian Center in Reno, Nevada. If you don't have a home church, we invite you to come and connect with us. We have ministry for the entire family on Sundays at 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. and Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Our Connect Youth Ministry meets on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights. Child care is available for all services. Our location is 120 Hubbard Way, half block east of the Pepper Mill in Reno. You can find us online at faithalive.net or by searching for Faith Alive at all social media outlets.
Thanks for watching and join us next week for Demonstrations of Faith. And it's flowing to me.